Hello, this is my alternate future series that's completely false because not one thing is going to be happening every year. So I've thought about this and I think the first thing that would be most likely to happen is that certain members of the European Union, I mean Schengen thingy wingy, uh, start uniting, including Switzerland, Italy, and France. I know Switzerland's neutral, but it's part of the Schengen Treaty, so whatever. In 2044, we have uh, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands all joining the Schengen County, and uh, in the war over in Ukraine, I guess I'll just color in Russia and Ukraine to, you know, okay, I know that's really weird for the colors because Ukraine's not really the attacker here. In them, Ukraine and Russia have sued for further peace, with Russia capturing all this land, and Ukraine keeping that. And so, let's see. This is what they decided on. Russia gets everything until the Ukrainian-Belarusian border meet at the most southern point. It goes down to the most northern point of the southern point of M Moldovian border. In 2046, Spain and Portugal both joined the Schengen uh, County. That's just what we're going to call it now. Schengen. Okay. And uh, Russia and Belarus unite. Tension is actually starting to occur between the U.S. and the Schengen area. The Schengens really thought that forming this union might actually increase ties with the U.S., but they were wrong. The U.S. does not really like them anymore and decides to break off all ties, along with Canada because, you know, they're basically the U.S., just more north. After this, NATO is disbanded, meaning that Russia can now completely, uh, uh, Go to war with Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. No, what? Oh, yeah, okay, we'll just go with Kaliningrad breaking free. So Kaliningrad breaks free from the Russian uh, force and tries to join uh, the Schengen area because it used to be part of Germany. But the Schengens don't really want this because then they have like a million ethnic Russians in their land. But whatever. Now with NATO being disbanded, the Baltic Brothers have no one to help them. In 2048, it's been over a month that this war has been going on, and people are surprised that the Baltics are holding up so good. In fact, Estonia finally calls on Finland to help them, and Finland uh, decides to join in. Now with Finland against them, the Russians are actually starting to be kind of pushed back. Pushed back. And, um, they want to get to the end of the peninsula. I don't really know what this thing's name is. It's 2049, it's, and it's been one of the one and a half years since the Baltic War started. Other than that, China threatens to invade India, and uh, tension is even tension is rising in between them. I shouldn't do that color because that's like friendship, and tension is rising in between India and China. Kazakhstan, being the absolute giga chad that it is, starts sending millions and millions of guns over to Finland. With these new guns, the Finnish are pushing up against. But the St. Petersburg Pe like uh, group kind of pushes them back to where they to where they were. Not before this war, just to, to where they were. And, um, Kaliningrad finally rejoins Russia, because they don't really want to have everyone in their place, you know, die. So in 2050, 
So Russia's seeing a lot of drama. The fully annexes uh, Latvia. So Russia's seeing a lot of drama. Not many countries are friends with it anymore. And uh, they break Finland into two. Like I was saying, not many countries break Finland into two. Not many countries are friends with it anymore. You see, even tension between China and Russia are spiking. Russia fully annexes the land that Finland had taken from them. And they start to push Finland back. And their flanking spearhead campaigns never work for the Finnish. And, um, the Finnish start a large scale re invasion. And in an insane moment in history, the Russians had uh, captured Helsinki. But, uh, the Finnish people, they fought the Russians for months and months. At 2051, the Finnish started an encirclement movement of millions of Russian troops, capturing over 6 million in the fighting. Russian numbers are severely down, and they decide to sue peace. So getting kind of obliterated by the Finnish, uh, it made sense that they would get to take the peninsula up here, and uh, Estonia would get to keep their freedom or else the Finnish, you know, would go back to war. <coughs> Latvia and Lithuania were completely annexed. Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan are going to form the anti-American faction. It, but it's one country. It, it's called the faction, but it's it's one country. I know, that's kind of weird. Just from hearing the name, Saudi Arabia prepares for war. And over the next month, many countries got taken over by terrorist organizations. Small countries like Taiwan and Bangladesh with massive populations are now terrorist organizations that join the American anti-American organization. That's what they call, they're called now, more than the faction. <clears throat> with, no, with all the countries in the faction being North Korea, Taiwan, Laos, Myanmar, Bangladesh, and Armenia, we can see that the anti-American faction is starting to gain a lot of power. The U.S. is slowly shipping soldiers through to Saudi Arabia, and because of a bad, you know, ties in the Schengen area, they have to kind of cut it close. But thankfully, most of the soldiers make it to Saudi Arabia and other countries like Ethiopia and Kenya in the region. India is starting to be taken over by terrorist organizations. Many people from the Taliban are moving through Pakistan and are starting to take over India. In 2054, a northern Indian region breaks off from the rest of India and joins the anti-American fa faction. On the 8th of June, 2054, Kazakhstan officially declares war, bringing in the rest of the anti-American faction into a war with Kazakhstan, only Kazakhstan currently, but soon it'll be basically World War III. And I just have to do everyone. Okay. The first person to join in on the side of Kazakhstan is Turkmenistan, followed by Azerbaijan. Next came Saudi Arabia and Israel. Israel is Israel. 
Next, Egypt. Oman, I hope that's Oman. Not southern India, Pakistan, and the U.S. As well as South Korea joining in on the fight. And even Indonesia. Indonesia launches many uh, crusades into Myanmar. Some of them didn't fail. So they made naval landings along the coast of Myanmar. Right there. And Turkmen and Kazakh troops uh, start to break three free from the front lines and get into what used to be northern Iran. Azerbaijan is quickly taken control of and has to surrender. Has to surrender. Is is my computer not listening to me? What what is wrong? Something was wrong with Pan 3D. Anyway, Azerbaijan had to surrender, but thankfully, small breakthroughs in the Saudi Arabian lines were made. After this, Kuwait joins on the side of the Americans, because you know, Kuwait loves America. And it. Israel actually does send like some larger bombs into the region of Iraq. Now even though all of this is happening, Lebanon and Palestine wouldn't join in on the anti-American faction. Not because they like America, but just they, they know that they're not going to win. Pakistani and Turkmen troops meet up and start pushing the Indians out of the area. North Korea makes a quick surprise invasion of the south. They capture Seoul, Daegong, uh, Yu Chin, I think it's pronounced. I'm probably wrong. And, um, yeah, they, uh, they kind of fully annex the South. The, in the Myanmar army fully regains control of, you know, their country again. So it's 2054 and the Myanmarese army starts to break through. And much of the uh, non-Tamil and uh, eastern Hindi regions of India are captured and forced to join the Anti-American League. And the southern Tamil regions too. Sri Lanka soon turns on the Americans. And what's left of India is forced to join the anti-American League as well. Now India is very strong. Well, what is the countries that make up India is very strong. And start to push back the Pakis and the Iranians also start to push back the Turkmen's. The Saudi Arabian and Kuwaiti troops uh, start to move through and capture much of the destroyed area that, you know, Israel left over, as well as Egypti troops getting through Israel and through Jordan. Jordan soon turns, turns to the side of the Americans. So this is what happened after that, and, um... I hope you enjoyed episode one.